Labyrinth Runner is the 18th episode of the second season of Nail House and 37th overall. In it, the head of the Illusion Coven stops by to give everyone coven sigils. Cousin Hunter are having emotional problems. Amity's trying to bond with Willow, and shenanigans ensue. The episode's title is a reference to Maze Runner, a YA story of films and books. This is the only episode of the Owl House where Luz does not make a physical appearance. In the past, a young Gus makes an illusion of Meat Titan or Veggie Titan for class as his partner ditched him for Fantasy Grudgeby, which is a reference to Fantasy Football. This causes Gus to run off and have a panic attack, doing that kind of glowing eye thing that Willow used to do, as he projects his classmates bullying him, as a young Willow helps him calm down and breathe. She is in fact in the Abomination Coven in the past, and they do remember that Gus was a nickname Luz came up with. Yet again, no intro. So we cut right into present times where everyone's taking multiple covens now. Maddie's now construction and illusion, probably inspired by Gus. Also, I guess he transferred back to Hexide after spending a hot minute in Glandis. Amora's illusion and healing. Edric is illusion, potions, and beastkeeping, all of which they showed in Region Out. And I guess I also joined an illusion coven. Look at Ed's face, he's just such a goofball. The illusion teacher is wearing a different outfit in present times. Her and Bump are talking about how people actually like being taught different things than the stuff they're forced to. Amity still has the Tamagotchi from Eclipse Lake. Luz sent her, learned a lot of bad stuff, the unity, don't scare him away, and a bunch of hearts. All but the hearts are referring to what happened in Hollow Mine. Also, Willow has some apple blood, both her and Amity are eating hot lunch, and Gus brought food from home. You know, the important details that I have to point out. Gus sees Flapjack and chases them into the auditorium, which is still wrecked from first day. Hunter's been hiding out in here since Hollow Mine. In his nest, we can see a bunch of apple blood, hex mix, and he's been studying on what a Grimwalker is. Gus gets called away for an assembly, but gives Hunter his lunch. Let me introduce the esteemed- Please, Principal Bump. I deserve no accolades. Hello, everyone. My name is Adrian Gray, head witch of the Illusionist Coven. <gasps> this is the first vocal appearance of the Illusion Coven head, Adrian Gray. I kind of like that he's just a guy with a tail. Kind of like that one guy in My Hero Academia. Unfortunately, I'm not here with good news. The Emperor's Coven has plans to stop multi-track studies by inducting every Hexide student into a coven before the Day of Unity. <gasps> Turns out the guy with the messed up face from Once Upon a Swap is a student. He's in the Beast Coven. Don't worry, no one's magic is going to be sealed away. The Oracle Coven teacher just puts his hand on Edric like, Hey, wanna make it four? Before any Coven Scouts come by, I'm going to make illusions of sigils on your wrists. They'll be temporary and harmless. Whoa, 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 wait, wait, I just started the other tracks. Are you sure this is safe? <gasps> Stop! Cut! Just... It was all a trap to brand the kids. And the real Adrian's wearing a completely different outfit, doesn't have stubble, and cleaner hair. And they're a very stereotypical movie director. All right, couple of notes. Tom, that Adrian illusion was lacking a certain... Hmm? You get me? Oh, Severine, that was really... Poor work. You're on thin ice. We were in the Coven Scout that has the little horns that look like cat ears, name is Severine. So Adrian's about to brand Gus, but then he has a freak out and causes random illusions, encasing the entire school. Hunter saves Gus. Adrian stabilizes the illusion with his earring. Him and the Coven Scouts appear in the Looking Glass ruins from Looking Glass. Find that boy, the one who did this. This is a complicated spell. I if we could have some direction. Am I the only one who knows how to do their job? Just figure it out. Amity and Willow are stuck together in an illusion of really small problems. Amity's now condescending to Willow in the opposite direction in her attempt to try and grow back together. Gus and Hunter are together because of the emotional support sandwich. And Gus's eye is still glowing. Woke up in Utopia where I fell down a flight of stairs. The Coven Scouts actually recognize Hunter without his mask unlike in Hunting Palisman because Bellows is looking for him. Which just makes me think that, like, Bellows put up, like, a bunch of milk cartons with his face on him. Gus draws a fire glyph, they escape into an illusion of his room. 
Ah, oh, cool, he has a Thane poster. A welcome to the garden poster, which Willow probably bought him. A uh, Thane that probably rolls marbles in. And Gus's rare treasures, handle of care. Which include what I thought was a bunch of rolls of duct tape, but is actually one of those things that Eye Doctor has. A pillow, a snow globe, a stop sign, a stamp, some exercise equipment, I think. A picture frame, and a bunch of other human garbage. Gus tries to get Hunter to calm down and breathe, but he's too cool and edgy for it. When Gus is talking about his friends, he has a bunch of keys. He has the band posters from Escaping Expulsion, posts from Really Small Problems, his birthday with Willow, his birthday with Luz, him being taller than Maddie at his birthday, and the Grom photo. Meanwhile, Amity's just wanting to be friends with Willow again, but she's trying too hard. Willow does that green eye thing she does again. Hunter and Gus make out of the illusion. Hunter doesn't know what a high five is because Luz had to tell Gus. They find Willow, but Hunter sees right through the illusion. Just put him out of his misery? God! To sleep, dude! To sleep! Oh, yeah, right, right. What the fuck? <laughs> Viney and Scar help Hunter, because they used to be on a fly derby team together. But Bum thinks it's questionable helping the Golden Guard. Even Barkus doesn't agree. And him next to Jerbo, and with Jerbo with like the scratchy chin. Am I, like, the only one who sees a Scooby-Doo reference? And then, like, Viney can be their Velma? Well, it actually stands up for Hunter. On the green board, we can see a Biosac heart. Our secret code is below. Gus is being held captive by the Coven Scouts. We see a yet another familiar one with the mouse tail. Adrian wants Gus to tell him where the Looking Glass Ruins are because he wants Golder Stones for the Emperor. Because Golder Stones are part of the recipe for Grimwalkers. And his little looking glass earring apparently amplifies magic. So like, illusion magic's already a magic amplifier. So his earring is a double magnifier. Gray may be head witch, but I'm still principal. It'd be wise to let me through. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. Bump is so badass. So the school fights the Coven Scouts. Everyone gets a little time to shine. Like Jerbo's abomination plant thing. Actually, look at Scar's palisman again. I can notice that's a bug and not a bird. I'm dumb. Enough! I will not be cowed by a group of students! Then how about just two of us? Nice one. Sailor Moon reference. Hunter even runs past this and they look at him like, bruh. Gus is casting a massive illusion spell, causing people to have bad memories. Hunter remembers Hollow Mine. One of Gus's bad memories is him getting tricked by the Glandis kids in Looking Glass. Tricked. Again. Everyone thinks I'm the smart one. So why do I keep acting so dumb? I can't even trust myself anymore. It's hard when you can't trust yourself. I spent my whole life believing I was doing something good or someone good, but it was a lie. And some part of me still wants to believe in that lie. Just like you want to believe you're dumb or whatever, but it's not true. I have felt very similar to both Gus and Hunter at similar points in my life, so I really appreciate a show talking about this. They both kind of get over it quick, but you know, it's a TV show. I wouldn't mess with you. Uh, now, uh, how did that breathing thing go again? <gasps> the Covens get sent packing. Severine quits, and yep, yeah, she's not actually a cat. But she is going to join the tiny cat coven. And Hunter tells everyone about the Day of Unity. This is a great episode. I love Hunter and Gus in this episode, helping each other through tough times. I often joke, and also Gus is there throughout these videos, but it's not because I don't like Gus. It's because a lot of the times he's just kind of there. This episode shows how great he can be as a character when the show actually focuses on him. And you know, the more I think about it, it is kind of weird that we don't have any beta designs for Gus, but we do have beta designs for all the other main characters. I don't really like saying this, but I do think he might have been added by Disney as a token boy character because media, especially for kids, is very sexist. And adding Gus could be a way to get more boys watching the show before the introduction of Hunter. 
I don't really like saying that because Gus can show that he is a dynamic character like everyone else, with his own wants and struggles. Episodes like this and Looking Class show that he can be more than just the background main friend. And other than that, Amity and Willow are great in this episode. Amity tries a little too hard to be friends with Willow again, which seems very realistic. For someone who's been bullying another person for a while who wants to mend ties. Principal Bump's great as always. Adrian's a fun theatric character. Overall, there's not a whole lot to dislike about this episode. I love seeing Hunter do well. I love seeing Gus get more importance. And I love the Owl House. Sometimes clouds have two sides, a dark and light, and a silver lining in between. It's like a silver sandwich. So, when life seems hard, take a bite out of the silver sandwich. <laughs>